So um, what I want to talk to you guys today about is, is uh, actually rendering a movie in Blender. Um, and uh, the reason why I'm picking at this point in time in our project to do it is because test rendering can oftentimes be a really good way of getting a sense of motion and speed, okay? Um, and we're going to talk about a, a couple of, of, of things about how we render and how we control some of our shadows and, and stuff like that. Right now, you guys only have this one light that's in the scene. Uh, hopefully, you didn't delete it. If you did, ask me, and I'll show you how we can uh, add another one. Um, it's no big deal. If you did delete it, I'll just have to show you that. I don't want to go into lights right now. We're just going to use the existing light. And then we'll talk about lighting a little bit later and once we get into the environment, just a touch more. Um, but what we want to do is we kind of want to test the speed of the cube and the sphere, test the speed of their collision, see if it's natural. If it's not, we need to adjust keyframes and so on and so forth. Um, one of the problems with that is that if I render out a movie, and you'll notice what I put here is I, I put down a, um, a cube, almost like a tabletop or a floor or something like that for these objects to be on. I find that that's really important to do because it gives you a little bit uh, of a better sense of speed when they've got something um, that's not moving. So if you just rendered these out with, without, if you rendered the, rendered the movie with just the two objects moving, and the camera's moving, everything in the scene is moving. And so you're not going to have a really good sense of the motion and the speed because you don't have something that's standing still. But if you have a cube as a, t as a floor, basically, then you actually will get a sense, a better sense of um, what's going on, how fast is the camera moving, how fast are the objects moving, do I need to make something slower, faster, whatever. Um, one of the problems that some of us might, or some of you might deal with is you have camera motion already, possibly, um, and that camera motion can actually also interfere with your um, uh, evaluation of how fast your two objects are moving. So what you might want to do is actually delete one of your keyframes uh, along the path. Well, 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 we'll deal with that. We'll, we'll, we'll do that in a second. So, so anyway, let's just, let's just go over some of the settings for rendering and, and what happens and so on and so forth before, we, uh, before I get into some of that. So the really important buttons that are going to be here are these three buttons. The first one's the camera, the second one is your scene settings, and the third one is your world settings, okay? And that's like an environmental, global environmental settings. Um, and, and the reason for that, those are we need to worry about um, the lighting uh, just a touch because I like, I actually like to control the lights a little bit and you're going to see why in just a second. But before we get there, let's just deal with the camera. So we're going to go to our render settings and then here you have the ability to render a single image, re render an animation, um, and then the display right now is set to image editor. If you do that, what's going to happen is when you hit one of these two buttons, it's going to take over this window, which I personally don't like. Um, I like it to pop up in a new window um, and then while it renders, you can continue to work um, or you can, more than anything else, it just doesn't get rid of this window because sometimes when you're not used to Blender, it can be kind of hard to get this uh, 3D view back sometimes. It takes a little bit of exploring to figure that out. I mean, it's not horrible, but... Um, so what I always like to do is I always like to change it to a uh, new window and that's, that's the first thing. And then you're going to see here you've got a whole set of um, size and, and uh, time, okay, right here. So right now, the, the resolution of our camera is set to 1920 by 1080. That is a 1080p signal, okay? That's high def. We're going to keep that there, um, uh, but it's set to 50% of the scale for the rendering. This means that it's going to be half of that. So what is that? Um, 9, 960, 960 by... Uh, 540, I think. I'm horrible at math. Anyway, um, so, but that's good. For our purposes, we're just testing. Once we make our final movies, we'll ramp that all the way up to 100%, and then it will render out the full 1920 by 1080. But since we're doing tests, 50% or below, you can even go about 30, 25% if you're just looking at motion, and it will go a lot faster. Okay. Um, then the next thing is the start frame and the end frame. Um, obviously, you want to start at one. 
uh, well, not always, but in our case we will. But the end frame is 250, and if I take a look at this, okay, if I right click on one of my objects here, you notice my keyframe is ending at 50. There's no sense in rendering out 250 frames when my action ends at 50. So just to give myself a little bit of extra time, I'm going to stop at 55. Um, let me right click on my, yeah, see that's good. My curve ends just before 52. So that's perfect. You know, so now you can see that the timeline, the end of this went gray. So that means that this time, anything after this is not going to get rendered. That also helps you if you really want to just check a certain specific set of actions. Like let's say I just wanted the collision and I just wanted to see that. I could literally rend render from 20 to 40 and just do that collision and, uh, and just see how that looks. In a, in a bigger animation where you had more complex motions and stuff, that could be very advantageous. We're going to leave the frame rate and everything like that the same. 24 frames per second is good. Um, and uh, um, unless you wanted to go to 30 frames per second, um, I don't mind. But 24, 30, don't, don't change to anything else. Um, and keep your aspect ratio the same. Um, I'm not even going to worry about that. Um, but then there's also some uh, important stuff that's down here. Um, when you go to shading, when I click on this, you notice by default everything is turned on. Now this is good if you really want to render a high quality frame or, or movie. But at the same time, if you just want to see the actions of your objects, um, probably want to turn some of these things off, uh, especially some of the, the later things, okay? Um, color management, yeah, just some of this. Um, I like to leave shadows on, but I'll turn textures off. And one of the reasons why I like to leave shadows on is because the shadows oftentimes are a key indicator if your object is floating or going through another object by accident, especially floating. So if I don't have the sphere exactly down at the bottom here, then what you'll see is you'll see a little separation between it and the shadow. And that's your first indicator that your object might not be touching the, the floor, so to speak. So I like to leave shadows on. But if you turn everything else off, it goes a lot faster. Um, so um, we'll, we'll do that. And then finally, what's really important also is right down here under the output. We're going to leave the, I mean, you can, you can play with some of the other stuff, but that, that stuff is all set pretty much to a default for you, and it's really good. Um, you don't really need to worry about a lot of it. Um, but here, we need to worry about this. Um, the output right now is just set to a temp folder um, that exists just right out in the hard drive. The problem is you these computers are locked down. You don't have access to the hard drive like that. And so basically what happens is in, in our network environment like this, if you render something right now, it just kind of disappears. It goes through the process of rendering it. It may even save it and you just can't find it because you can't see this folder. We need to set the folder to our accounts, okay, to the Amedia student's account. So what you're going to do is you're going to click the folder here, and then this is going to look just like it does when you save. It's just going to be a little weird. Um, but you can go up to Media Students, okay, and find your folder and save in there. So in my case, it would be Media Staff. And what I recommend, actually, is making a new um, – a new directory, a new folder, which is right up here. Create new directory. And it says, do you really want to create one? Yes. OK. And then it creates this new folder right here. And I like, I'll like i name it Blender Render. I like it because it rhymes. It's got a nice little rhyme to it at the same time. And it's very obvious what it is. So I'll just create this, uh, this folder called Blender Render, um, which then shows up here. And then I click on it. And then I go over here and I click the set. Boom. Okay. And now you can see down here in my output that it says Blender Render and it has a series of dots. And what that means is that the address for this folder is just too big for it to, to put into the window. But since I know I created that folder, I know I'm going to the right place. The other thing that you want to set right down here is right now the default is to save in what they call PNG format. And what that means is, if you've got this set for 24 frames per second, it's going to save 24 individual pictures for each second of animation. We don't really want that, especially not for uh, just testing. 
okay, your, um, your, your motions. We just want to make just a quick time moving. When they do rendering for professional stuff, though, a lot of times, most of the times, this is what they do is they do uncompressed individual frames. And then there's a lot of video software that has plugins that allows you to in import what they call image sequences straight into, right into the software. And then it just comes in and it makes a movie out of it. It's pretty cool. Um, but uh, we're, we don't want to do that. We're going to do the easy thing and, and slightly less professional thing. So you're going to click on PNG, and then you're going to go in here and you're going to select the quick time, okay? Um, and then that's what it should say there. And leave the qual the, the video codec can be JPEG, quality 75%. Um, I actually like to go to the animation codec, which is a, a little, um, just a little higher. Um, so that once we got that, we got all that set up. Now we can actually try and render a movie. So let's go see what happens here. So I'm going to go uh, scroll back up to the top, and uh, if I want to just render out an animation, I just hit the image button. So let's just try that and kind of see what's going on. So right now, at this time, it's going to render out this animation here. <coughs> let's try rendering out the whole movie. So I'm just going to hit animation. And so what you can see is you can see right here it says frame one, two, three. So it's going through the frames out of 55. It's going to make this movie. And you can see every time it goes. Um, and then up here you have a little progress bar. okay? which is just showing you that it's rendering. If you need to cancel the render, you just close the window, or you can hit the little X key right there. Um, but it's going, and it's making my movie. When it's finished, it doesn't pop up a window and say, yay, the animation's finished. Doesn't It just kind of stops, okay? And it doesn't really do anything to let you know that it's done. So it's good to keep in mind, okay, what did I set it at? Oh, 55. Okay, ah, I'm on frame 55, and it says it's finished at 55. Okay, cool, and that means my movie's done. Um, and uh, we can see how it's going. So let's just give it another couple of seconds here, and um, we can deal with, with um, uh, watching the movie. I'll show you how to watch the movie. Um, it doesn't also pop the movie up in the window, and you can't just hit play. You actually have to go find it, okay, and open it up in QuickTime. So that's a little inconvenient, but no big deal. You'll notice one of the things that uh, I really don't like is how harsh the shadows are here on the, um, uh, on the object. And, and actually what's interesting is I didn't really notice that when I turned, um, the, I, the shadows are still turned on, that that does not mean that it's projecting a shadow onto the, um, onto the object. So that must be one of these settings, probably ray tracing, uh, that I might have to turn on that would, that would slow things down a lot. But we're at fif frame uh, 55 right now, it looks good. So let's close this and we're gonna go find our, our movie and we're gonna watch it in real time. Now the reason why we have to go through this process is because as your animation gets more and more complicated, you can't trust this little play button. Okay, right now it actually might be accurate or close to accurate. Okay, maybe. I I'm not quite sure. We might have to time it. But as your animation gets more complicated, Blender will not be able to play the animation in real time right here in the the 3D window. Okay. So it's very important to, to know how to render so that you can test your, your actions. So let's just go here and uh, oops, let me get out of full screen mode. I'm going to go down into my finder and I'm going to find Pen Media FS and I'm going to go to Media Staff, find my name. So you would go to Media Students. There's my Blender render folder and double click. Here's my um, movie and uh, let's 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 watch it. So my first thought immediately is, you know what? It's a little fast. Now the motion of the objects actually seems to work okay. It's kind of hard to tell, but my camera is really moving pretty fast, don't you think? So what I might want to do is slow my camera down a little bit um, so that it we can A, focus on the motion of the objects a little bit more and, and see their speed. And also, I mean, the focus of this animation, the camera is kind of supposed to be an invisible thing. It, I mean, it's good to have a camera motion, but it's not good to have the camera motion be the whole thing of the animation. We want to watch our object. So what I'm going to do, instead of adjusting my keyframes, which is an option, I can stretch it out. But then if I did that, the motion of the camera might actually take longer than, well, it would take much longer than the, than the collision itself which might not be a horrible thing, but instead what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tab into my, um, my animation and I'm just going to shorten it. So I'm going to reduce um, 
the um, the amount of motion that it goes through and kind of change um, what it's what it's seeing just so that it doesn't actually have to move quite as far in the given distance that I that I have for it which essentially translates into a slower speed so instead of adjusting my keyframes I can adjust that distance um, and now my arc is a lot smaller and since the arc is a lot smaller the camera is going to move s uh, effectively slower and I'm trying to be a little careful about my shots here so I'm just going to scroll through my time remember option scroll allows me to go through and see what's going on that's still a really big arc so I'm going to continue moving it a little bit in here also part of my problem as I'm thinking about it right now also is most likely the fact that um, I'm so close and because I'm so close I was animating my um, animating the empty and so maybe I don't want to animate the empty quite so much so I might uh, tab out of this right click on my on the empty let's go back to its keyframe here So there's my keyframe. And I'm going to move my empty over just a little bit here so that the cube is visible and reinsert my keyframe here for my empty and allow the empty to move a little less. There we go. See, now that is going to be a lot less motion. So now I could re-render it and test it again. And you'll make other changes and then you'll re-render and test it again. Do you, do you get the idea? I mean, it's really just kind of an experimental process. You're just trying to test your motions, uh, make sure that everything looks okay, and really be objective about it. Is this too fast? Is this too slow? And then, you know, the, as I just ex uh, showed you, the solution is not always to just move your keyframes. Okay? Sometimes the solution is to change the distance that an object is moving or something like that. However, let's say I wanted to slow something down. Okay? We kind of went over this in the original, but all you need to do in order to, um, to slow an object down here is to right click on the, the keyframes. Let's say I wanted the second keyframe for my empty to be a little faster, okay? I just right click and start dragging, and then I left click when I want it to lock it in, okay? And now the empty is still moving a little bit longer and it's going to change that that look um, I might even see my cameras moving all the way to about 50 so I might want to line this camera target motion up with my camera keyframe which I can see uh, along the path here so now those two are lined up right here and so now I can uh, or close enough you know and then I can test render again so now let's let's turn on all of our textures and stuff oh one of the other things is We'll just do a frame really quickly. I'm going to turn on all my options here. Watch how long it takes to just do one frame now. And this is, this is at half resolution, too. Well, not too bad, actually. Um, you'll notice I've got some color in there and everything like that on my cube. Let's, uh, let's go forward a little bit and see what happens when the two are kind of close to each other. So it's still pretty quick for, for, the, um, for each frame. Notice now it's casting shadows down on the object. Um, and, but notice how harsh the shadows are underneath the, um, the, the sphere, okay, and everything. We might want to make those a little bit less harsh, okay. Um, there's lots of ways to do that. You can add another light, all that sort of stuff. But I find one of the easiest ways to do that is you click on your world button here, and you go down to environmental lighting. And what this is is basically a light that just kind of comes from everywhere. So it doesn't have any direction. It just comes from everywhere, it goes through objects, it doesn't cast any shadows or anything like that, and it's basically really used just to fill in. Check that, and then take the power way down, because set it to 1 is way too much. I find like 0.2 or 0.250 is really good, and then I'm going to go back to my render and let's just see what it looks like. 0.25 is probably even maybe a little bit too high, but it's starting to look a little bit more natural, okay, because of, of the way things are working. Um.
It also would help, I think, if I had a texture on my table. Okay, that's going to help the sense of motion as well, because right now that is sliding on a plastic, um, you know, gray plastic table. So I might start to work on giving that a nice wood texture, something like that, which I'm not going to demonstrate right now. But you can see that it's it's uh, it's pretty cool, and and there's uh you know you, I've got a semi see through and also semi reflective cube. I've got a sphere with a nice texture to it. And then by bumping up the environmental lighting, I don't lose all of my shadows. And yet I want to be careful. I still have a nice pure black right here along the edge or close to a pure black. And that's really important. If I had the environmental lighting at one, uh, it would be awful. So does that make, does that make sense to everybody? Um, you know, don't go hot, totally nuts crazy with all these settings that are amongst the world and, and the camera and the scene. Um, also, the scene settings here, we didn't even really go through those. Don't worry about those. A lot of those are audio. Do you want the audio volume up? Well, we don't have audio, so it doesn't matter. Um, do you want units like in metric? Do you want this thing to be measuring in millimeters? Uh, that really doesn't matter for what we're doing. If you were designing something to be 3D printed, then which is really cool, by the way. I've done some of that with Blender. Um, having it in millimeters and, or in centimeters is actually really important. Um, so th there's just some options here, but really we were more concerned with the, with the world. Um, try not to change the ambient color, um, but you can try and changing the sky, uh, the horizon color. Uh, you, can, you can do all sorts of uh, uh, stuff that might uh, make it a little bit better, but we'll talk more about some of that stuff later. Really what I want you to do now is test your motions, okay? And then once you think you got everything, you can try rendering out a, a full movie. Just realize that with all the options turned on, it can take a while. Always double check your folder. Always double check your, um, uh, the format that you're rendering out to. Always double check it. Um, and you can also make it black and white to speed things up a little bit, but it doesn't speed things up very much at all. Um, and then so you'll notice that as I start to, um, as I start to render this, it's going to take a, a little bit longer because I've got the full textures turned on. Okay, And it gives me an error. Unable to create QuickTime Movie. And I'm not quite sure why that's happening, but we'll just soldier on. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay.